The HB Project and the HB Channel are supported by Hi-Fi Clubben. That sound kills good music. Storing enormous amounts of music on a computer is easy. The difficult part is to retrieve the desired music quickly. Ask a librarian and he or she will tell you that the only way to run a library is to store the books according to a very well structured system that has literally been developed over centuries. It's a system that uses defined structures like author, translator, publisher, genre, ISBN number and so on. All this information is called metadata. Storing music the old fashioned way by putting vinyl or CDs on a shelf benefited from the knowledge of the librarians. But almost only in those cases where institutions or large companies were involved. Think of music libraries for broadcast stations, companies and so on. When the MP3 generation started sharing music over the web, this was not backed up by those large institutions and companies, since it was an illegal activity. Therefore, MP3s generally didn't even hold metadata. Clever youngsters simply used a directory structure on the computer that started with a directory carrying the artist name, holding one of more directories holding the album names. Each album directory held the tracks and each file was named after the track. Music players at that time were very rudimentary, so you simply opened the directory and clicked the song you wanted to play. After some time, Jukebox software came to market that was able to play more than one track at a time. That made it necessary to identify audio files or more than just the directory information. In 1996 this led to the ID3 V1, a small addition to the MP3 file that could store track information, album information, artist name, release year, comment, track number and genre. This was about what youngsters needed to index their music and since this all took place in the illegal download scene, no standardization body was involved. Two years later, a number of enthusiasts introduced ID3 V2 that, in spite of its name, differed greatly from the uh, V1 version. The biggest difference is that it can contain over a hundred fields with information like popularity, the star rating, composer, director, cover art, lyrics, copyright message, language and many others. Unfortunately, it took a very long time before the popular jukebox software actively supported all these fields. The youngsters were not interested in the composer, arranger and the like and they drove this market. Those that loved classical music didn't know fields like composer and director were available, so a Beethoven symphony was stored with the artist named Beethoven instead of the orchestra and the director was not mentioned at all. All that changed when online music sales came to market. It would have been unacceptable to orchestras, directors and artists not to be mentioned in a proper way, let alone the copyright owners. But harm was already done. When people started to rip the CDs they owned, the ripping software consulted databases that were filled with the composer as artist. The quality of the databases initially had far more problems that were far more ir irritating. I had never dreamed up so many variations on the Beach Boys. The Beach Boys, the Beach Boys, the Beach Boys and Beach Boys, comma, the to start with. Variations like leaving out the and varying the capitals gave me tens of variations that were all interpreted differently in different players. Another problem was that the artist was often entered family name first, Dylan, Bob, Bowie, David and so on. That would have been alright if there weren't made errors like Mac, Fleetwood. And what to do about El Di Miola? Does that become Di Miola, L? or Miola, LD. And then the Dutch artist Benny Sings, should that be Sings, Benny? His real name is Tim van Berkestein, so that doesn't help. 
With composers it's even more complex. Everyone knows Beethoven, but how many know that his full name is Ludwig van Beethoven? Even if you had heard that, you would have searched for Ludwig von Beethoven since he was German and van is Dutch. When I realized all this mess leaded nowhere, I started to use one program consequently, iTunes. I'm a Mac user ever since OS X 10.1 was introduced. Before that I have used any Windows version and since I always kept using Windows computers. Of the 11 computers I currently own, 5 are Macs, 3 are Windows, XP 7 and 10 and the rest are Raspberry Pi 2Bs. Therefore iTunes was a logical choice. On a Windows computer I certainly wouldn't have opted for iTunes. Since iTunes can't play bit perfect, I initially started to use add-ons like Amara, Orivana 1, Pure Sound and the like. Later J River was also added and currently Rune is by far my favorite jukebox software. I have also tried a bunch of Windows jukeboxes. The reason I tell you this is to have you understand one very important property of a music catalogue, structure. What file format you want to use is up to you. MP3 and AAC might be sufficient for portable use. I would use a format that leaves all the music information intact for playback in your living room. That leaves the fully uncompressed formats WAV and AIF and the lossless compressed formats FLAC and ALAC to choose from. Provided your equipment is designed well, you will not hear any difference between these formats. If you do, don't blame the format but your equipment. As we have seen, WAV is very limited in storing metadata, too limited I would say. Therefore AIF, FLAC and ALAC remain. There are other file formats too, but you don't want to use a format that is poorly supported since that will limit the choice of your alternatives while it brings no benefits. I keep two complete sets of music, ALAC and FLAC, to be able to review all kinds of jukebox software and network players. But if that was not the case, I would have only used FLAC. You can easily work out a routine for a given jukebox program or music player if you prefer that name, but that doesn't mean it will also work in another jukebox program. Now, you might not be interested to know how your music collection shows up in another jukebox program. Yet. But believe me, you will be someday in the future. We have seen Adobe and Microsoft today only renting their software like Photoshop and Office. Microsoft also have changed the Windows EULA so that you now own the right to use the Windows 10 only on the computer it is currently installed on. What if Microsoft starts renting instead of selling Windows? When that happens, wouldn't you install Linux on your computer, like many already have OpenOffice installed? That would also mean another jukebox program. When your music collection have been set up properly, it will take little or no time to use it in another program. But if not, it will take you months of spending some evenings every week to get it right. I went that dark route so I know. It's completely up to you how you would like to organize your music collection. I'll give you a number of suggestions based on over a decade of experience with file based audio. If you only play popular music and I assure you that you will never start listening classical music, things are less critical than when you mainly listen to classical music. So let's start with tip 1. Always store your music in the directory structure artist, album name, track number, track name, like Adele, 25, 1, space, hello. If the album spans more discs, use artist, album name, disc number, disc number, dash, track number, space, track name. Like the Beatles, 
white album CD1-01-01 back in the USSR, using a directory for each CD plus also mentioning the CD in the track name is Bells and Braces. But when you add the album it's a little work and you never know if your next jukebox software works with belts or with braces. If you want to have a number of collections next to each other, like for instance all FLAC files and all DSD files, that's no problem. Within the music directory make a directory named FLAC and store there all the FLAC music in the structure of artist slash album slash track number dash track name and do the same in the directory DSD. You can now have the jukebox have both indexed by pointing to the music directory or have it index only the flag or the DSD directories by pointing to the relevant directories. Many jukebox programs will do the organizing for you using about the same system of directories. For smaller collections this seems to work fine, but I have had nasty experiences with it. Music disappearing, compilations that were spread up over a large number of artists and so on. I would therefore suggest to switch that off. That's possible in most jukebox programs. Your ripping program will have suggested a set of metadata when ripping. That's fine and really a time saver, but you should check if the artist name, album name and other fields you value are in harmony with your existing collection. I made one sensible choice early in my file based audio infancy. I use artist names as they are mentioned on the album art and the official site. So Bob Dylan, Fleetwood Mac, The Who, KTB, Minor Victories and Cap Mo. I also copy these names in the sort name field to be sure I always have to type Bob D for Bob Dylan and Katie to find KTB. Since most jukebox software is able to ignore articles, I leave them in place and switch the ignore articles or ignore the on. For composers I always use the full name Lute van Beethoven, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and Marin Marais. But in the search composer field I always use the family name, first name, middle name, Beethoven, Ludwig van, Mozart, Wolfgang Amadeus, Marais, Marin. Extra complex are names that are originally written in a different alphabet, like Cyrillic. This is how Piotr Tchaikovsky is officially written. Since there are no official rules for converting Cyrillic to Latin alphabet, I have seen these three ways of writing. This applies not only to Russian composers and artists but also to Chinese, Taiwanese, Arab, Greek and others. The only exception might be Japanese since Portuguese Jesuit priests in the 16th century defined a standard to write Japanese in Ro Roman characters, the so called Romanji. One of the options in the metadata is the so called compilation tag, a totally wrong name. It is intended to be used in those cases where there is no primary artist and the music is compiled from a number of artists like the hits of 2015, Motown stars and so on. It was not intended for the very best of the Beach Boys since that clearly had a primary artist, the Beach Boys. The current metadata standard has both an artist field and an album artist field. Ebony and Ivory by Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson is on the album All the Best of Paul McCartney. This is a compilation CD of McCartney's hits and contains Michael Jackson as well, but you shouldn't set the compilation flag since the album artist clearly is Paul McCartney. For the compilations in the meaning of the metadata flag like the hits of 2015, there is no primary artist and the album artist field should say various artists. You could use any other name here and I have seen multiple artists and compilations and others, but the de facto standard is various artists. There are several ways to store the album art. 
The most popular ones are in the directory with the music, using the name folder.jpg or embedded in the file. The latter is done using a metadata program, on which I will report in another video. The advantage of integrating the cover art in the music file is that the music and cover art are married forever. The disadvantage is that it makes each music file larger. A 20 track album will have album art in all 20 tracks. It is therefore important to keep the file size of the album art as small as possible. For that you have to decide first what size cover art you want. Choose something between 400 and 800 dots wide and high. 400 is sufficient for smartphones and 800 is better suited for tablets. Then you have to use a graphics program like Photoshop to export the picture for use on the web. That's usually the way in graphics software to get small files. And since you already have the album art in the graphics program, why not save a copy to the directory where the music is under the name folder.jpg. Again belts and braces, but so little work now and a pain if it is needed in the future. There are several date fields that can be used, like the release date and the original release date. Depending on your jukebox software, you might be tempted to use the release date for the original release date, but it would be wiser to change the setting of your jukebox software so that both fields or at least the original release date is shown. Take for instance Abbey Road by the Beatles. That was originally released on September 26, 1969, but there was a remastered release at September 9, 2009. If you want to play 60s music and you use the remastered release date, Abbey Road will not be included. I'd rather have the opportunity to choose period music than knowing when the re-release date took place. Knowing both would be even better. I find the genre field the hardest field to use. Some genres are simple, the Portuguese fado is clear, like church organ music or reggae, but what label to give to the Beatles, pop, rock, lullaby? You could call blues simply blues, but there's a big difference between little Walter and John Mayle. And what about Duke Ellington's blues in orbit? Feel free to play around with it and if you found a way to handle it, please let me know. Many jukebox programs still give you poor access to all the fields of the ID3 V2 de facto standard, often because they show music on a line per track. Still it is handy to have all fields filled out completely. Often you can select for yourself which fields are displayed. And sometimes, like with the fantastic Rune software, far more information is shown by using inventive layouts. As said, I have been working with file based audio since 2004 and still track the rapid development. I have written a very affordable and extensive ebook on file based audio, you will see a short impression at the end of this video and a link below this video in YouTube. If you want to stay informed on this and related subjects, subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first. See the link in the top right corner. You'll find more information below this video on YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next video or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.